Welcome to Perfectly Unleashed, a podcast where four friends talk about dog mom life, mental health, and everything in between. This week, we're going to be doing highs and lows, and we'll be starting with Nikki. How was your week? Um, it was okay. I only had a three-day work week, so that is definitely my high. <laughs> so Wednesday was my Friday, <laughs> which is wonderful. Um, and then my low... It was a pretty good week, so I'm going to go ahead and be superficial and say my low was that I wanted to get my nails done and I didn't get to, so. <laughs> <laughs> I get um, that. Yeah. Just, I haven't done them in a really long time. I finally grew out all of the gel. Then finally, like, they were strong again, and I wanted to ruin them, and I didn't get to, so here we are. <laughs> I wanted to ruin them. <laughs> it happens. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Um, all right, Caroline, how was your week? My highs and lows aren't really like an event. Um, but I would say my low this week is it's been a rough week. It's been a really difficult week. I haven't made it out of bed much. Um, haven't had much to eat, haven't had much sleep, just a rough mental week. Um but my high is I'm just constantly reminded at how great of friends I have. And I just feel like very supported and heard. And it's a great feeling to have. So that would definitely be my high. Alexis. Oh, wow. We love, we love that. Can you it's so line. important. We do, we do. I love y'all. Um, <laughs> I would say my low is that Okay, so that wasn't the greatest, but I also didn't don't have to work tomorrow. So that in return is my high because I'm going on a trip and I get to, to not work tomorrow, but I have to drive. So that's the worst part. But I'm right, driving either. I know, I know, I know. It's all about balance. <laughs> um honestly. I've had a pretty like mediocre week. I have I don't have anything that really stands out or anything that just like kind of pinpoints. I've been so busy that I haven't had a chance to really sit and like marinate about this week, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna say my low was doing that intro because <laughs> my, my anxiety is <laughs> for those that, that don't know me I'm not I don't like doing things like this <laughs> but I did, did it. great and that's why you did I, great I, I conquered it I mean you nailed it so you did thanks reading is hard sometimes and memorizing <laughs> a lot of times <laughs> at least for my, my brain mm-hmm. mine too for sure <laughs> okay guys I have a confession uh oh, Nikki, what's the confession? I've been keeping it in all week because I feel really guilty about it, but I lied in the last episode. What'd you lie about? I'm nervous. I'm I'm a little nervous. I know, like my heart just dropped. <laughs> well, I think that I said that I only spend about one to two hours a day like on Instagram content creating, that part of being a content creator. And it's just not true. It's just not true at all. It's way more than that. <laughs> I don't know I'm what the world. Like it's some big like. <laughs> I don't know. Nikki's into Lulu. <laughs> I don't like to lie. It's not. Have you been that thinking about this all week? A bottles up. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> you know what? I, yeah, I respect I mean, yeah. that. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> I think like spiraling. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Just one of the many things I've spiraled about this week, but most of the other things you guys know about. <laughs> Going around and around and around. Yeah. I hit rock bottom a, right before we started recording, so I just needed to get I needed to get it out. Um yeah, I feel like I wake up and go to sleep thinking about Instagram content creating in some way. I can't turn my brain off (laughs) for better or for worse. Definitely for worse. It's definitely for worse. Um, But 
I mean, I'll wake up at three in the morning, think I have a brilliant idea, send a text to one of the three of you or in the group chat, maybe. Um, And I fully last week pretended like I have great boundaries and I (laughs) one to two hours at night after work doing all the things I need to do. You fall in my category of indefinitely. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Always working. Probably physically on Instagram, maybe an hour or two a day, but I didn't take into consideration all of the other stuff that happened Mm -hmm. in the background which I think is great for me to bring up now because that's what we're going to talk about on this episode. For sure. I definitely want to shine some light because I feel like there is a lot of misconception of what a content creator is. I feel like people think you just take a picture and you just just upload it and you walk Mm -hmm. away. And absolutely absolutely not. Could you imagine? I wish. I wish. Like, what about like connecting with your audience? What about like reaching out and, and Mm -hmm. networking and and creating like friendships and things that like, you just like upload a post and walk away. And if any content creator sits and says they just uploaded a post and walk away, there's absolutely no way. I think if, if you, if you are that person that just uploads and walks away, you're not a content creator. You just post on Instagram. So, like, when I first started mine, that's what it was. Oh, but same, now, yeah. like, actually yeah. taking it and making it a job and something to do, that's when you become a content creator and realize that, like, everything else it takes besides just taking a picture. And yeah. now, looking mm-hmm. back at it, would I have ever thought that it would be this hard? Absolutely not. Am I right. grateful? Absolutely. You know how well, hard it is to get a picture percent. of a dog? Like just, just in general, I mean, think about how hard it is to get a picture that you like of yourself. Now try to do something with an animal that's continuously moving and doesn't care at all about the fact that you need content. And this is the reason why I have like when you have pictures of all my dogs, because there is absolutely no way I'm getting them all together. To put them all together is rough like that. I've I've gotten that a few times, but it is hard. And like the worst part is when you have an idea in your head and you want to bring it to life. Like how many times you guys like I come to you guys, I'm like, oh my goodness, I have this great idea for Quinn. I don't know if she's gonna let me do it. Usually she does, but like it's hard. (laughs) Like it takes me probably like 20 minutes to teach her that trick that I need her to do for the post. And not only do you have to get the content. You have to come up with the process, the creative concept. You have to figure out what you actually want to do. You have to get the content. You have to find a sound that goes specifically with that content that's trending and hopefully an original audio. And then you also have to caption it, edit it, you know, like make it ready to post. And then you can't just post it and ghost it. Like you actually have to do stuff mm-hmm. with it, you know? And so it's, you have it's to much more engage of a engage with your audience to make sure that you're answering those comments and. Mm-hmm. Because, like, how would you feel if you're commenting, like, how would you feel if, like, you commented on somebody else's thing and they just were like, okay, I wouldn't comment again. Right. I mean, that's just me because, like, I enjoy having that door of, like, communication and, like, getting to kind of know you. And if I'm commenting on your stuff and you're not responding back to me, I'm not going to continue doing that. And I see a lot of content creators making that mistake where they do not answer comments yeah and then they complain that their engagement's not doing like their engagement's not at like where it was because you're not engaging with your audience right Mm -hmm. likewise I am so thankful to the people that consistently comment on my posts and I feel like I have real life friends in those people like I want Mm -hmm. to respond I want Mm -hmm. to know what they're doing this weekend I want to know the new trick that they taught their dog I want Mm -hmm. to know the advice that they have when I'm asking about how to perfect a trick or how to do a certain type of training in my post I really value that and I mean it's not fun to get on Instagram and have 
interactions with no one. Like, I don't want to just post yeah. and walk away. I want kind of the boring. social aspect of social media. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. I have to and say, I think it's sometimes. like, it's, it's special when you do build like connections with people and you do, you do build that like genuine, authentic interaction in community. And I know for me, like I have specific people that have commented on basically every post for over a year yeah. and they are consistent with it. Every single post I make, they're there and I can like always count on yeah. them. Like, okay, well, if I post this, at least I have that one person that I know is going to comment, you know, like you mm-hmm. just build such a strong community with your followers and with your audience. And it's something that you can't get by just posting and walking away. You have to actively work to build that trust with your audience and, you know, that engaging, that is that engaging community. So I think you hit the nail on the head with saying that it was authentic. Like I, Mm -hmm. you can tell when someone is copy pasting their answer to every person in their comments. Mm -hmm. You can tell if someone that comments that you're getting a copy pasted answer, Mm -hmm. the authentic, the authenticity, that's a hard word, um, is is super important. Words are hard today. Um, But that's really important. I mean, Mm -hmm. I want people to think that I'm a real person. I want people to think that I'm genuine and authentic when I'm posting. I want people to think that I believe in the things that I'm posting and I stand behind the things that I'm posting. And the only reason, the only way they're going to be able to do that is if they see me as a human, well, a dog, but a human. Um, And the only way to build that is to build your community, build your little corner of Instagram. And with that comes trust because you are credible, you're authentic, you're real. And I think that's one of the biggest things when you see influencers and content creators, you don't know if you can trust them. You know, when you're, when they're posting things, it's hard to know like, okay, are they just posting this for a check or are they posting this because they stand behind it? And so I think that's one of the biggest things that separates you when you are genuine and authentic, your audience knows that you're not going to lie to them and that they can trust you and that you're credible. So I think that's That's why I felt goes with it. That's why I felt so bad that I did lie. Because I know that the same people (laughs) that are commenting on my posts that I comment on their posts are listening to this podcast. And I, Mm -hmm has been feeling so guilty Mm -hmm. that they're thinking that I have been able to get where I am with that's, that's 14 hours a week. That's insane. I'm insane. I I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I have to say like people do when you build that community with people, like they really do support you and Um, as of right now, we're not live with our podcast and I have people DMing me. I can't wait for this. I can't wait for this. I was having a conversation with somebody and I was like, oh, I'm not really like, uh, like today was a hard day, whatever. And they were like, oh, what's going on? Like, I hope everything's okay. I'm like, no, no, no. Like it was just busy. And like, I'm coming down with a cold. Her response to me was, and I like, I kid you not. Her response was, well, you better pull it together Thursday. And I was like. I mean, I will come here, like, not coming out of my nose, of course. Like, she's like, the show must be, like, must go on because it's March 4th, you're here. Like, <laughs> I love that. Like, that, yeah. that I love. And you wouldn't have that if you just post and walk away. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that there are people that do that, but... You want to build the friendships. Like, I've made some that... People will randomly and just out of nowhere, hey, how's Buster? I don't post Buster and Ella as much as Hudson anymore just because they're like, and no paparazzi, please. But um, they're still here. And like, so when people don't see Buster, they're like, hey, what's going on? Is Buster okay? And I'm like, how do you even like, you guys are still around? Like you were here when I had 58 followers and you're still here checking on him. Like now over 5,000, like that's pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. So like that I love. Like I have every all of us, we all have great supporters for our platforms when it comes yeah. to like things that we're dealing with. 
Um, because believe me, all of our supporters see those trolls in our comments. Um, but they all come together. They check up on us. I mean, we check up on them. They yeah. want to make sure that we're doing okay. Um, I started doing for mental health because I can only speak on my mental health. And I feel like there's a bigger spectrum out there, obviously. And I started asking my audience if they wanted to share more with me and for me to share with my audience for like things to make them feel a little bit better to put out mm -hmm. there. Um, I have a lot of people giving me information, which I'm been eating up and trying to figure out how to put that into reels, which, but like, I don't know. I just love it. It makes me feel good. I think it's so fun. I imagine. And yeah. I think it's interesting that and wonderful that people are comfortable enough. You have created a platform that gave people the ability to open up to you about their mental health struggles themselves because they might not be comfortable posting it on their own and they want mm -hmm. to give you the education so you can post it for them in the right way. For sure. Mm -hmm. So now that we um, have talked a little bit about what we are going to be getting into this episode in, um, let's go ahead and start talking about our process of what content creation looks like for each one of us. Um, okay, but before we do that, I have to plug our book. So <laughs> we wrote an ebook. It's called The Social Blueprint. It goes into a deep dive of everything that we did to get to where we are on our platforms. So if you want that kind of step-by-step, -step, head over to Etsy. Where else? Uh, we'll link it in our bio, and we will also link it to this episode. Thank you. I'm not so good at admin. Um, so you can find it over there. <laughs> the social blueprint. Pick that up. There are ways to contact us if you have any questions once you're done reading it. And then we're going to go into a little bit more personal stuff with our own journeys and the chaos that has ensued there in this episode. So the content process for me, I'm sure, is different from everybody else. I'm pretty sure we all have our own way of doing things. Um, but me specifically, I like to scroll on Instagram, scroll on TikTok, scroll on even Facebook, YouTube shorts, literally any place where there is a real type video. I will scroll until I can start getting my inspiration. Because um, typically I'll see something and it'll remind me of something completely different. And I'm like, I want to do that. Um, so that's kind of like how I spark inspiration. And then I'll either have a notebook or my phone with me, write down kind of like my ideas of like, that sounds like a good idea or like, mm, maybe I'll try that and see what happens. Um, so that's typically where I get my inspiration. And like, I always create my creative concepts first before I do anything else, because I feel like if I have an idea, I know what to film. I know what to look for with sounds. Um, and then I'll typically try to find a sound and then I'll find spaces that I want to film. Um, so I'll get the content and then I'll edit the content, try to make sure it matches up with the sound and then the over text. And then I'll go from there, saving it in the drafts. And I like to think on like what I'm about to post, like, is this actually something I should post or should I probably not say this? Because sometimes I think I have an amazing idea and then like 10 minutes go by and I'm like, what was I thinking? So then it just stays in the drafts and we forget about her. Um, it's so nice that you have that. I don't have that filter. <laughs> uh, honestly, I thrive off of that because whenever I get that moment of mm, maybe I should it, I'm like, you know what? I should because it's going to make people uncomfortable and I live for making people uncomfy. Some of it just genuinely makes me cringe and <laughs> makes me uncomfortable. And I'm like, I don't want to know that that's on my page and have that haunt me for the rest of my life. So <laughs> that's when I try. I understand. <laughs> maybe not. Um, so then I'll, you know, caption it. I'll do like a cover photo, edit that, get all that ready. And then I'll go engage with some people, post, and then continue my engagement. And then from there on, I'm typically like living on Instagram at that point, just like trying to keep up and make sure I'm responding and engaging with other people and 
stay on Instagram for at least 30 minutes. And then that's kind of like my process and how I, how I post. So, you know, if my post time is 11, which I try to post around the same time for me specifically to have consistency. Um, so like between 11 and 1130 is my post time. So basically from 9am to 12pm, I am posting content. Like that is the allotted time for focusing on making sure I have the content I want to posting it. I want to do a better job at like batching content and getting like five ideas, filming all of them and editing them, having them ready to go. But it typically Me doesn't too. work like that. I work it's under so pressure. Hard too. It is. I don't know it how is. people do that. I don't know how people do it and stay relevant. Meaning yeah. how do you do that? And then have the trending audio still trending mm-hmm. four days later when you're ready to post it. I don't understand. I just, I don't have that motivation. <laughs> I would rather like wake up in the morning and be stressed that I have to post in two hours and start trying to find what I'm actually going to post and then get the content and like be rushing to post it. And then when I post it, I'm like, <sighs> okay. And then it happens <laughs> like the next day. It's the cycle. <laughs> um, but that's typically like what my process looks like. So. See now, like for me, I am nowhere near as like timed and like organized as you are like I will I thrive like, in organization <laughs> uh, typically for me like I kind of get the idea for the real like the day before and mm-hmm. if I don't then I just do a static post because I nothing's coming to me um also sometimes I get it same day and it's usually like for my reels I sit there and I'm like what is the most relatable thing on this topic that I can speak about. So whether it's about uh, service dogs, whether it's about like training, like whatever it is, like what is the most relatable thing? And if I'm absolutely stuck, which all of you guys know, I do the best thinking in the shower. I don't know what it is. I literally will go take a shower, come out and be like, guys, I figured out what we're going to post for for pup. (laughs) It makes me laugh every time. Why do we think about this? Every time. I don't know what it is. And like, it comes out of nowhere. So like, I guess my process would be, first off, I'm whenever I'm on Instagram, I'm never mindlessly scrolling. I'm mm-hmm. always looking for what to post and like, mm-hmm. oh, you know what? This is a great idea. I'm going to save this for later. Or like, I'll send it to my personal page so that I don't lose it, which like my personal Same. page I have not gone on and I don't even know how long. Um, um, so like, I'll do that. Typically, I get the idea for the reel, and then I try to match the thought behind the reel with the caption. So, like, I want people to know whatever it is that I'm pushing out or that I'm providing. It's something that I connect with. Yeah. Like, it, like I have an experience, like, something to that, which is what I said earlier when everybody's, like, giving me their information about their mental health. I love that it's a little bit harder for me because it's not things that I can speak on, on myself, but we will, I will produce that content. It's just, it's a little bit trickier for what Mm -hmm. I'm used to. You want to do it in the right way. Yeah. And I also don't know how to just like post and then like get off Instagram in like an hour. I'll like check in and out throughout the day and like a comment, like an answer comments or like I'll get DMs. And then I like get trapped in Instagram world. Yeah. It's really like, I'm really not mad about it, but like, (laughs) I think my wacky wonky. Um, lazy Instagrammer, honestly, (laughs) I, I sit there, I get off. So I get off work at typically at one 30 and at one 30, I get off work and I just scroll and listen to sounds. And at now being a content creator, I feel like when you're scrolling, you're not just, scrolling to keep your mind busy like right. we your mind's your mind is constantly going because I'm like oh I like that sound oh I could take, mm-hmm. take a video of Hudson and like make it so I literally find the sound that I want to use I see if it's trending I take the video or I find a video in my in my um camera roll and I post it and then I like probably for about 20 minutes we'll talk back with people and then I'm out be later <laughs> because like if not like my brain doesn't shut off 
because right. it just wants to keep thinking about what, okay, what can I do for this? So if I don't tell myself mm-hmm. to get off Instagram, I will be continuously thinking about Instagram. Oh, Same like, thing, like, like even me. if I go to, <laughs> yeah, you go to your, you go, you're not even on dog. I'm not even on dog talk, but still thinking about, can I use this sound on Instagram? Mm-hmm. So it, I guess it's just different for everybody. It's just crazy. I, I definitely like, relate to that. Yeah, I feel like my process is completely different than all of y'all's. <laughs> I, I never, I don't think I've ever found something I wanted to create and then gone and gotten the shot. I am constantly taking videos and pictures of Ziggy and Toad and then I reuse that. So, but my content, I also feel like is a little bit different than your guys' content in this setting of the things that do really well for me are, I mean, I wouldn't really call myself, put myself in the category of comedy, but I would, I think that the sounds that I use that do well for me are the ones that would fall into that category. Mm Mm-hmm snippets of funny people talking that I lay over a video that I already have of the dogs. And then I put the words on the screen and nine times out of 10, I almost always forget, almost forget to make a caption. (laughs) I don't know what it is. I, (laughs) I I can't get it together to be like, (laughs) I need to put stuff that matters in this caption. And the thing with that is that I love reading a caption. I love when captions are long. I love when people tell me more information about what's going on in their reel or picture in the caption. And then I just don't do it. I mean, I tried to. Have <laughs> You're like, well, <laughs> You're like, this is good enough. It's fine. <laughs> Literally, I'll I'll put something up. I think I posted something yesterday, and the caption was like one sentence, and I was like, mm, <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to say about this. And then I try sometimes to be really thoughtful about my content and create something that is, I think, meaningful about, I did one this week about training and how it's hard and it's difficult and and that's okay. And it's never going to stop and all of this. And very quickly, (laughs) my followers said, no, this is not what we want to see from you. They didn't say it, but the views said it. The views surely said it. I think it's so crazy how that works. Like, how it's uh-huh. different for everybody. So like mine, I feel like my best videos are the like sentimental ones. Yeah. And like those do they have a play on Buster's cancer. Like literally those ones will skyrocket. And then I post one to a funny video and people are like, nah, I'm good. Nope. Yeah. Totally <laughs> like, the opposite. I feel like funny videos wouldn't do well on mine. Yeah. Yeah. I feel it's like they'd be like different. different. To be fair, I do think, like, and this, this is what I signed up for. I love Ziggy and Toad, so, and I know that people listening to this podcast also love Ziggy and Toad. So let me preface this by saying, I love them. They are mine. I think I birthed them like they are my children, <laughs> but they're funny really? looking. <laughs> so I think that's why the that's funny hit because they also. Like the sound is funny, but they're funny looking. I was not uh, expecting this. Hello, they're so cute. <laughs> they might uh, be funny looking, but they're cute. Cute in a way that only the mama can look. <laughs> My favorite. Thing I is love so them. Floppy feet. So yes. Floppy feet. <laughs> oh, those baby wait, paws. Wait, wait, Nikki posted a picture of Toad, and I. Sh- I straight up was like, please tell me that 0.5, like, camera view did him dirty. Like, there's no way that his neck is that small and his body is that long. 
And I was in her DMs talking to myself for like a hot minute because I was like, there's no, there, there's, there's just no way. There's, there's no way that yeah. he looks like. <laughs> he looks like, he looks like a wiener dog in that picture. <laughs> and it was the point five guess the lens that did it because I wanted to get, it was a picture of them walking from above. Just, mm-hmm. it was more so. so like a, both of them. Yeah. And it was but like a high world live. Like no neck. He had no neck. Well, and he, he was no all neck. body. He has no neck. This this boy is over forty pounds, probably no higher than than twelve inches off the ground, and that might be generous. Um, but his neck, his neck is eighteen inches around. <laughs> oh my gosh! He's big what he has of it. Oh it yeah, Skyler. <laughs> bigger than my own neck. <laughs> <laughs> he must be, he's bigger than Ivy too, and Ivy's a big girl. She's she's like bigger, bigger than Ziggy's. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, that's that's my theory. Of I think that they're funny looking, so people like the funny content. I wish yeah. that I was the one that created <laughs> the sound because I think that that would be a lot funnier, um, or a lot you know better. I mean, you could, you could. You could I think I'm too down. inappropriate to make my own sounds. <laughs> okay. For the record, everybody is agreeing with her, like on their facial expressions. For those that cannot see, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we are all silently. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But to be fair, I probably tend to do mine either because my mouth is like a sailor, so that's not appropriate for Instagram either. Yeah, people get really offended when I use the sounds that have curse words in them, like really offended, like feel the need to come comment and say, I just don't know why you had to curse. And usually my response is, well, it's not me talking, Mm -hmm. but also I'm an adult. I don't (laughs) I'm, I'm that's right. Everybody came for me for a Quinn's F off collar. But that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. She wears it when she's working and it does the job because let me yeah. tell you, when we see children out there, their parents are not like, go look at that dog because <laughs> And that's important. <laughs> does I will job. say that as my husband I... yells at me and said, What are you gonna do about the kids? And I'm just like this is so that the kids stay away. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I will say that I think my content has changed a lot since I started Instagram because I was. Oh, yeah. The poster and ghoster. I was just throwing things up. I go back and look. Speaking of cringe, I go back and look at old. I, I archived a lot Me too. of stuff on my page because the oh, videos no. I that I. Oh, everything what? up. You can find <laughs> kind of the baby like. Everything's on there. I some of the stuff I used to post. I'm like, why did, you, why did you think that was a good idea? Why did you think that 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 editing matched the sound? Did did you think there was a beat yeah. there? Can you hear? Are you okay? <laughs> Listen, it is, you didn't know. You didn't know then what you know now. It's okay. It is correct. It is correct. And yeah, it's just it's wild to see from someone that has no graphic design background, no video editing background, no picture editing background, no photography background, the difference in my pictures, videos, the the way that I'm holding the camera, the angles that I'm getting has come such a long way, which is such a fun, unintentional outcome of doing this. Like the pictures that I have of me and Christian are better. The pictures that I take of just Christian are better. It's just so about the angles. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> no, I still am very much Honestly, that mean. I... That's like the pictures that I take of my husband versus the pictures that mm-hmm. my husband takes of me. But we're getting there. I actually, I, I, I taught Mario to take better pictures. We're, we're getting somewhere with Mario. For those that don't know, Mario is my husband. Um, I definitely relate to you from like the beginning of our Instagram. I think everybody can relate from the mm-hmm. beginning of all of our Instagrams to like now. Um, 
Carol and I, Carol and Carol. Are you okay? <laughs> I think my brain just had a seizure. Um, let's try that again. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Caroline and I were kind of started the same. We both started as our as just solely dogs, and we're both incorporating ourselves a little bit more. She's all just like God bless, like like all you on that page. I don't I love think it. I have the confidence to do that. I I love that. I love how much your page has evolved from Sky to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a big difference because I was just posting Skylar and I posted a video of me and Skylar and I was like singing along with my favorite song and the views on that video and the comments on that video. I was like, oh, interesting. People want you. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. And so I started posting more and more kind of experimenting with things and I'm still in an experimental process. Um, I'm finding that people enjoy seeing me and Skylar. Um, and I am noticing that people enjoy seeing a more authentic side, which is something I'm always authentic on my page, but I'm not as open um, to share personal details and personal things. I keep a lot of my life off camera. Um, and I will probably continue to do that because I don't want people to know all my business. I want to have a sense of privacy. Um, Boundaries. They don't have yeah, to. Sure. They don't have to see all of you. Exactly. And so I'm trying to find like that line of, okay, I'm going to be open about this, but I'm still going to keep this off limits. And I actually posted something today that did really well, and it was something that made me really nervous to share. And I was going to share it two days ago, but Instagram decided to not work for me. So I've been like holding off till today. And when I put it up, the response was really good and it was really encouraging. And it was, I got a lot of messages from that reel I posted um, that were also very encouraging. And it was just me being completely open Mm -hmm. saying, Hey, I experienced this with my mental health and I struggle with a lot of things I don't talk about. Like, you know, people don't realize I can't go to grocery stores. I can't drive um, because of anxiety. And just Mm -hmm. being like open and sharing that has been something I've been like trying to get better at doing. um, Because I've, I mean, a lot of people don't feel comfortable. And so, you know, if I saw a video that said something, yeah, saw a video that said something about like, um, I don't care about the views anymore as long as I'm helping at least one person. And I like, I smiled when I read that because I was like, you know, it doesn't really matter if I get 200 views or 2000 views, as long as one person in the comments is like, wow, this really helped me today. I'm good, you know? And um, I've definitely found I'm experimenting with content and trying to figure out what people like, what people don't like. And that's kind of the process we're in now, but it's definitely changed a lot from where we started. Yeah. I think all three of you do a really good job of just that, like having people, giving people a safe space to open up and relate to you. And then also in turn, having your messages be open to talk it through. It's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. I don't really do that on my, I don't talk a lot about myself on my page. I think your page is a little different. Yeah. I, th- I think if you tried to do that, it wouldn't go over it as well as it does for us. Mm-hmm. That's not why people follow no, me. Like, no, no, like shade, but like, I no. I don't think it would go over well with your audience. Yeah. I don't want that for me. With mine, like, so I started it, like you guys know now, because to show everybody how Buster is doing, if I would post the things that I do now, then it probably wouldn't be the same as it is now, because like Buster kind of has faded out and it's become more of like everyday struggles more than just 
Buster. I mean, at this point, he's just chilling. Like he doesn't have any big milestones that he's hitting anymore. So I'm like, I had you have to switch your content because like mm-hmm. I started to show what Buster was going through, and now Buster's just over here. Like he doesn't have anything yeah. that happens on the daily for me to share anymore. So now I'm like, you have to figure out what to post. And evolve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. you have to evolve. Yep. So my content just completely changed because. I wasn't posting about my dog so now I'm posting about me and my dog yeah. or my other dogs so it's just crazy how this creepy yeah. changes over time it's interesting when, oh sorry go ahead go ahead no go ahead okay. it's interesting for me that things like you guys post don't hit because it's not that I don't want to be open about my mental health struggles it's not that I don't am not happy to share things that I'm going through. And I do Mm -hmm. have conversations with people about that in messages, but it's, I had to learn what my audience wanted to see. And it just frankly was not that from me. (laughs) And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And, and the content that my audience wants to see is a lot easier for me to create. It's not as deep. It's not as emotional. It's not, as vulnerable Mm -hmm. and so it's it's I don't have to let it sit in drafts for a couple days to make sure that I I want to post it I the interesting thing that has changed is that people now seem to want me to post more about my dog reactivity journey with toad Uh, honestly yeah yeah not something that I thought so many people go through it and mm-hmm. don't say anything and yeah, don't know I, how to handle it. I don't think people really were that open about it. Um, especially like we still take Toad into public. We we push him to his limit, make sure he doesn't go over threshold because we want to work on it. He's a social dog. He He wants to do these things. So we want to support him in being happy and having the most fulfilled life that he can. We obviously do it in a safe way. And our journey looks different because we were not the family that said, okay, well then that's it. You're not going to go on walks through the city with us. You're not going to go to this brewery with us. Um, We kind of took the, and we were fortunate in the fact that we could do this. Not, not all dogs can get here. um, And that's okay. I was just going to say, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that with Ivy. There was right. no way. Right. Which you probably we're going to, to mm-hmm. we're going to have an episode on this in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Don't share too much. Yeah. Um, yes. We do yeah. want to talk about this because this is something really important that I feel like needs to be talked about more. And it's something that a lot of people struggle 100%. with. Yeah, I mean, I, I have think- a reactive dog, but I don't, I don't talk about it. I don't share it. Yeah. I don't have conversations about it because for me, it's not something that anybody wants to see from me so like it's it's very different and I definitely feel like it's going to be a good episode to talk about and really get into and I have shame around it Mm -hmm. like I I I did and but it was interesting to me we're gonna we're gonna pause on that and we're gonna save it for the next video (laughs) save it for an episode Nikki's like yeah you're right but you know there's so much shame that I felt no (laughs) it's just interesting that I think that my audience wants to see it like that's that's the part that I think is like so I would have never expected that for sure yeah Yeah. for like for my platform I tried to have a voice in there because I've grown up to this day to the point that somebody just said to, to be this week for me not to speak on my experiences. And when I say like experiences, I mean like things that happened with my mom and I shouldn't be speaking about those things and I should keep all that and don't speak about it. I'm almost 30 years old. I've been shushed my entire life on speaking on my feelings, on how like I saw things, my experience and I'm just like, I'm just tired of it. Why, why do I have to be quiet? Like. Stop telling women to keep it inside. I'm getting like, telling me that I can't. Like, why, why can't I speak about it? I experienced it. 
why are you taking yeah. my experience and, away? And I think that's when my platform really changed because I was so tired of people telling me, don't talk about your mental health. Don't talk about this. Don't yeah, talk about. We don't talk about that. Okay, so we are going to go into our Q and A segment. Um, so the first question is, how many brand deals do you do a month, uh, Alexis? If you want to touch on this, and we'll go around and talk about that. So I have um, two brand deals that are like ongoing. So I do them every month. I don't really count those because I just know about them in the back of my mind. Um, I would say paid brand deals. I like to do no more than three at max a month. Um, but I mean, there's always some wiggle room for me. How about you, Britt? I prefer to do one. I keep it one per week. Sometimes I overload myself and will think that I, I am superwoman. I can do it all. And then I get like overwhelmed and then I forget what my deliverables are it's at max two per week I can't do more than two per week my brain can't handle it <laughs> Nikki what about you I'm kind of the same I like to keep it to one a week at most if I can now I also have been in the situation where I got yes happy and I posted nothing but sponsored content for like a week in a row and that was awful um, but mm -hmm. I like to keep it to like once a week because I like to still be able to use my own creative brain and also give people, people don't want to only see, sponsor, I don't want to only see sponsored content. So um, mm -hmm. I like to still be able to post like four or five things that I want to, that has no tie to anything. Um, and then I have one ongoing brand deal that happens monthly. I also don't count that one. Uh, what about you, Caroline? Oh, <clears throat> I try to keep it like Alexis and do about three a month. Um, I personally get very overwhelmed very quickly, very easily. Uh, something we're finding out in therapy is that my nervous system is not quite right. Um, so my tolerance for overstimulation is very, very low. Um, so I definitely like to keep it slim, keep it not stressful. Um, and yeah, like I try to do about three a month. I do also have some ongoing partnerships. So I'll try to sprinkle those in there and make them less ad like, less sponsored like, and more just incorporate into my lifestyle. So I also don't really count those. Um, but yeah, the next question is what is your worst brand deal? Nikki? I don't want us <laughs> to answer that. I don't want us to answer it. Um, it's, it's too much to talk about. Mm -hmm. I think there's too much that goes into it about why we feel the way that we do about certain brand deals. Um, so unfortunately I hate to do this, but you're just going to have to tune into the episode next week because that's all we're going to be talking about. Um, yeah. So we'll answer that one then. Sorry. I hate doing that, but <laughs> here we are. I just next week. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in this week. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 You can find us on Instagram at Profitly Unleashed. Head over there. Let us know what you want to hear. Ask us questions. Everything will stay anonymous, so no worries about that. You can stream our podcast at Profitly Unleashed on Spotify and YouTube coming soon to Apple Podcasts.